Well, Nikachu has been playing Merfolk every week, so there's like some certain cards missing that he might not have in his normal Merfolk build. So I think every week his Merfolk build gets a little bit more and more awkward as time goes on. So I think that might catch up to him here. I, I'm kind of rooting for him to just keep winning because I really want to see what the, the fifth version looks like, the top <laughs> eight version. I don't know how it's even right? possible. <laughs> so for opening hands, it uh, looks like a pretty decent merfolk hand. There is a <clears throat> moth lit changeling or moth dust changeling. Not the best merfolk, but uh, otherwise looks good. Rhinos, maybe a land shore, a rhino in hand, a lot of forces. What do you think about the rhino hand? Is that is that keep even? Well, you have Leyline, and Leyline is almost a two-card combo with Scion. So whenever I play Domain, I tend to just keep any hand with Leyline. The force, double force negation is a little awkward because there's not a lot of things to counter besides Aether Vial. And then with the Crashing Footfalls, you've already kind of mulliganed already. So I don't know. It's kind of close. Yeah, like, This hand doesn't a... really do anything, but you have some good draws. So I'm mm, yeah. not really sure. It's always... Always tempting if you got the ley line just because it's such an explosive card. And it looks like BBD is going to keep it for the ley line and uh, stick it into play here on turn zero and start off with a land and the good old suspend crashing footfalls. Exactly how you want to make your rhinos in modern <laughs> waiting four turns. Yeah, I guess this hand is a little bit better on the play since the footfalls might actually come into play. Um, Yeah. The spell pierce is actually pretty big, I think, from... Uh, from the merfolk side actually we see the ether vial here on turn one is this worth snapping off the force of negation how oh, many good targets sure. are there even yeah i mean there's flame of anor but you don't really care about flame of anor in this card you might keep a lot of loose hands with aether vial just because it casts all your uh creatures so yeah i definitely like countering it yeah, I mean, I was going to put a Moth Dust Changeling into play next turn. Can't can't have that. The Mighty Moth Dust. We see a Fire Ice, which is actually Ooh. pretty good against Merfolk off the top. Not a not the worst draw for BBD. Yeah. Oh, wow. He didn't upkeep it. I wonder if he just wants to use the removal aspect of it. I'm guessing he's thinking he's going to try to snipe a Lord, maybe, rather than uh, rather than cycling. Although cycling, it's tempting, right? Because you have the Ardent Plea to Cascade into Rhinos if you hit a land. Here mm -hmm. we see the Moth Dust. Yeah, it looks like both players are taking a slower approach to this game. Nikachu yeah, Nikachu. Wants to leave a Pierce. Yeah, which makes sense. Turn three is kind of the big rhino turn normally, and CBBD like <laughs> hovering around hoping a land comes off the top. So the spell pierce is going to be really impactful if there is a land off the top here, I think. This calling tarn is extremely good as well because BBD might have been keeping it in hand to try and tap the land DOT so he doesn't get pierced. But now with this calling tarn, he doesn't have that as an option. Is BBD going to kill a Moth Dust Changeling here? Uh, are we get, hmm, are we cycling anyway? Okay, we're going to kill the Moth He's Dust. Killing it. Wow. Thing for one. So not going to wait around for the Lords. I imagine this, not enough for the Spell Pierce. And Nikachu seems to agree there. Well, BBD is down to one card in hand. And that is, <sighs> so Classic. once there's one more land, there's going to be a lot of Rhinos coming. But uh, mm -hmm. for now, all Cascade Spells. Yeah. Does Nikachu have the surveil land? Oh, he does. Ooh. Nice. There it is. Yeah. The it's it's so funny how good those lands ended up being. I was thinking when they first came out, probably not good enough for aggro, but good in mid range and control. But looks like they're good enough. Ooh, it's a flame of manure on top. Do you keep it, Luna? Is this worth it? It kills a rhino. I would keep it just because your opponent missed a land drop, so you're kind of cool just going land pass, leave up Pierce. If you don't do anything, draw two. I was, yeah, I would have been tempted to. A draw two seems nice, but it looks like it's heading to the bottom here. Maybe one for a slight, well, okay. A non mutable land off the top is kind of big because it lets Nikachu get down a Lord and leave up the Spell Pierce, which he's definitely been valuing. Yeah, I think that's what he was probably wanting. He kind of wants to get on the board. And yeah, so the Lord is down. We're going to see some, hmm, oh, okay. So it looks like BBD might be going for some surveil lands here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's trying to find top. land number three. And I believe that card was left on top, so it's got to be a land. Yeah, especially with the other fetch. He could have found. He could have fetched again for another surveil. So here's land number three. We're going to see Shardless Agent. So mm -hmm. Spell Pierce can't hit the Shardless Agent, but it can definitely hit those Crashing Footfalls, which is about to come off the top of the deck. Mm -hmm. I wonder... Is Rhino still in good shape here? I kind of forgot about the Crashing Footfalls that suspended. Like, over the next two turns, we're going to see double Crashing Footfalls hit the battlefield. 
I wonder if the two Merfolk Lords, there is an island, so Island Walk is on. I wonder if that's going to be enough to race. It's, I think it's a huge draw step for Nikachu, because like you said, the crashing footfalls are going to start coming down. But if Nikachu whiffs, oh uh, yeah, it's going to make the clock a lot slower. So there is a Muta Vault. You can get down the other Island Walk Lord, chip in for three, get down the Muta Vault, and the next turn you can attack for eight? Maybe. Ten, right? uh, three, six, oh, is ten, it? Because the Muta oh, Vault oh, gets doubled up. Right, down. right, right. Yep, I was missing the Muta Vault buff. You're right. So actually, maybe you just win the race unless BBD hits uh, some removal here. Yeah, I don't think he's playing a very removal heavy deck either. Yeah, and the like the fire ices, the lords kind of outscale those, so you can't really snipe the lords with those. So we might see a bunch of rhinos, but the rhinos, <laughs> island walk, pretty powerful. Uh, it might not be enough to stop these little fish. Yeah. Um. So here's crashing footfalls. Just... Oh, actually, hmm. Wow, but at the same time, BBD is going to put. <laughs> 18 power into play so if nikachu swings out this turn he would die in the backswing we're actually going to be in a very interesting spot here i think nikachu really needs a top deck like just some sort the flame of Inor would actually be would be pretty good right now just to killing one rhino i think swings the race yeah he's got a lot of live draws so we see Four rhinos on the battlefield, a lethal potentially board of tramplers. Going back to Nikachu, huge top deck here. Needs a non land for sure. Ooh, ooh. That is okay. really interesting. Yeah. So Etoir is too expensive to fire up the Mutavolt and bounce a rhino. But you could attack for six, bounce a rhino, and then next turn try to Alpha Strike and survive yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, survive it. Uh, Ooh, four, something like that. Five. Yeah, or is actually not a bad draw. It might be enough here. So here's the attack. BBD dropping down to eight from the two lords. We see Cavern hit the battlefield, land number five. And wow, we're back to another big draw step here. What is BBD's best draw? Maybe just a line of Draco or something. Well, he still dies on the backswing. Well, I guess it doesn't on. save him, does it? He's hmm. like, I think he needs ice into another ice so he can double tap. Do some tapping. So we yeah. see a surveil here. And that's Leyland of the Guild Pack. Definitely not going to do it. So let's go into the graveyard. And. <laughs> <laughs> well, as powerful as Leyland is when you have it on turn zero, not the best top deck uh, <laughs> uh, on turn uh, turn five here, six. Here's a big attack, but uh, I don't think it's going to be enough. BBD's just hoping. The Nikachu doesn't have ever anything. We know a Tuara in hand going to take down a Rhino. And I believe that's the win for the Merfolk. Mm -hmm. That was a close race. It was very close. And BBD was even on the play for that game. So, yeah, Merfolk powerful. And Merfolk, the Deep Root Pilgrimage. I guess you can play it as a flex. You might as well make make those tokens. <laughs> the combo I guess... with Mothless Changeling. Yeah, that is kind of cute, actually. And we're going to see some uh, the Merfolk tokens here on the way out the door. So here's the attack. Lining it up. It is lethal. Going to get to make a, a hexproof. Well, no, he won't. We'll see the concession here. And on to sideboarding. So how much does this matchup, do you think, change in sideboarding, Luna? Um, Let's see. BBD has disputes. And Pikachu has... Looks like force negation was the force first negation. thing that he went through mm -hmm. uh, towards. Yeah, so counter spells on both sides. Force negation is pretty good since violent outburst is gone, so all the rhinos are now sorcery speed. The speed is also decent, um, but aether vial plus cavern makes it so a lot of your merfolk are um, uncounterable. But yes, the speed true. is also good at forcing your rhinos through. I don't what do you think, think about changes too much? What do you think about the Deep Root Pilgrimage? So we see uh, them all go out almost immediately. Is that a play draw thing, you think? Like they're a little bit too slow if you're on the draw compared to being on the play? Yeah, uh, trying to amass a bunch of tokens against 4-4 four, four Rhinos just doesn't go <laughs> as a good game plan for going long. You definitely just want to kind of have something more closer to the original game plan like you had game one with the two lords just trying to island walk and counter timely crashing footfalls and just buy yourself enough time 
yeah that seems like uh seems like the plan staying aggressive the one one's just they're they're fine but they're just not that impactful against the bigger bodies from the rhinos deck with scions and rhinos and so forth and looks like we're on to game number two we're gonna see bbd on the play again with the rhino deck mm -hmm. and hmm that is a land heavy merfolk hand but a decent that seems like a pretty good hand from rhinos we don't see a ley line but we have ley line binding for removal there's a scion that can come down early and a shardless agent hit some rhinos oh nikachu mulligan i was thinking with the double fire outlet maybe he was okay with it but doesn't want mulligan into a bunch of spell pierces which paid off really well last game Will they be as impactful this game? I guess they don't stop the sign of Draco, but we still see the Shardless Agent for Cascade, so still might be good enough. Mm -hmm. I find her also notably good against Cascade. Get that trigger. Yeah, that actually is pretty sweet. We see the subtlety going to the bottom, which I guess makes sense here. If you're already a card down, going down another card for a subtlety can be kind of brutal. So we see a land here from BBD. And and that is a subtlety off the top of the deck. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't get away from it. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine we see, oh, a Triome. Okay, that makes sense. I was thinking Surveil Land, but the Triome lets you get down Sign of Draco here. If you uh, actually... He's just a little bit shy. Quite, not the right Triome to actually make it work. Yeah, yeah, he needed the Jun Triome, which I don't know if he actually has the Jun Triome. So we I know see that in regular domain, you usually only run one triumph. Yeah. So yeah. Just the wrong combination. Wow. That is another subtlety. <laughs> uh, so now we see just another land here for the merfolk. Looks like so Nikachu has definitely shown a tendency to want to leave up the spell pierces compared to just running out things uh, early in the game. So going to leave up the spell pierces instead of playing the Lord. Glory Revealed can get a, a land that will turn on the sign of Draco, I assume. Mm -hmm. The missing green mana. And ooh, there's a mystical dispute. That could That'll be, be pretty draw. good here. There's no cavern or ether vial. So this is kind of the dream scenario for a mystical dispute against Merfolk. Yeah, and here comes play the dragon. Yeah, dragon on the battlefield. No ley line, so it's a, a fair-ish uh, sign of Draco, but still a 4-4 four, four flyer with uh, some upsides. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we're going to see a subtlety. And then, hmm, do you dispute the subtlety or do you just not care? I kind of feel like I would just let it go and recast it next turn, but so there's a subtlety. Yeah, I could definitely see letting it go. EBD is not under any pressure at all. Yeah, pretty far heading cards right now. And yeah, BBD just going to put it back on top, I presume, and can try again next turn. Merfolk, another two mana lord. Let's see if Nikachu actually adds to the battlefield. Like, how long can you sit back on these spell pierces without having pressure? I feel like the longer Merfolk goes without pressuring, the worse it's going to be against Rhinos. Yeah, especially with only having two lands. It's going to be hard for him to play two spells in one turn. I think Nikachu really would have loved to land there to be able to like play the Lord, leave up spell pierce for a cascade spell into uh, rhinos, but no land going to run out the Lord. And this might be, this might be, wow. Okay. We're going to see the mystical dispute hit the Lord and then BBD can untap. And if he wants to just shardless agent into rhinos with the coast, we know being clear, no force negation, no mana for spell pierce. Mm -hmm. And we see Cyan was put on top and yeah, looks like the rhinos are a coming. Shardless agent. I wonder what this will find. Ah, crashing footfalls. <laughs> Those chaotic cascade spells, you never know. Never know what they might hit. <laughs> Some people play beans and legacy with it. And that's Moth Dust Changeling. <laughs> the problem with putting Moth Dust Changeling in your deck is sometimes you draw it. Uh, there's a Lord of Illness. <laughs> Darn, drew a card and put in my deck. Unlucky. <laughs> it's good with Deep Root Pilgrimage for sure, but with the Pilgrimage is being sighted out, uh, it's it's not the best one drop. They, you can see the cost of having to have 28 different cards each week, kind of adding up with like, Mothos is a card that I'm sure if Nikachu was just going to run a league or something, probably not going to have Mothos Changeling in the one drop slot. 
true. Here's the attack for 10. And can Murfolk get out of this, Luna? Is there any nope. chance? Nope. There's a fiery eye. I like the hibernation on your sideboard. Like... <laughs> Your line out, and you can hibernation their entire board. Cool. <laughs> it would be super, yeah. It would be super funny if it worked out. And we see the win going to BBD, and yeah, Murfolk that game just couldn't really get the mana going to add to the board, and also be able to leave up the protection there. So we see the Flames of Manure coming back in, and it seems like there's some play draw differences. I don't know about the Deep Root Pilgrimage. I wonder if they come back in being on the play, or if they're going to stay out. <laughs> Yeah, I think play draw here is taking out subtlety because when you're on the play of less resources, and so Flame and Ore, you can kill the Scion or draw cards. Whereas when you're yeah. on the draw, you just kind of want to survive and not fall too far behind. That makes sense. And I don't think BBD's made any changes here, actually, that I've noticed. So might be running it back with the same setup here for game three. Oh How big of a deal... I just missed three under. force okay. vigors and DVD. Oh, no. Yes, we are, we are. We are in answer. trouble. Not yes. If, whoever plays against the three. Yeah, either players. one of us are in trouble when we play against BBD. He is prepared. <laughs> At least there's no stony silence. I think that's the, the most brutal. Yeah. Wow. All right. We have one landers all around, although one lane ether vial from Merfolk, oh. which does. Oh, boy. Uh, but that is, a very... is so good. <laughs> That is a very scary hand from even with a mulligan here, having to put a card to the bottom. Leyline in the Scion with double removal spell. That is going to be a tough one. Cannot counter a Leyline on turn zero, uh, unfortunately for the Merfolk. We do see an Aether Vial. Can, so uh, I got to look at the Merfolk deck list. Is there a way for Merfolk to get the Leyline of the Gill pick off the battlefield or? Is that pretty much just there for I the don't game? Think there is. Ooh, Blue that's red, gonna be... not very good at removing enchantments. Maybe yeah, I, I guess. It. Yeah, like an Atwara to bounce it. I think there is one Atwara in the deck, which I don't know how realistic that is. But yeah, that that might be an issue. That might be a little bit of an issue. Interesting. BBD's gonna try and kill the creatures. I'm guessing, not kill the vial. A fair strategy. Yeah, I guess that's the seems to be the plan. There's a rhinos off the top, not the best top deck. I guess it's still fairly early in the game if you suspend it, but still better to cascade into it. We see Ducey is suspended though. Merfolk I'm going to untap and another spell pierce. Hmm, not great against Cyanodraco. No, it is not. We see the. Flame of the Norse are not going to be able to kill it either. Yeah, Cyanodraco with a ley line, uh, very, very hard to hard to deal with. Turns out Hexproof is quite the mechanic. Yeah, definitely Splinter Twin situation against Merfolk. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Merfolk is just not set up for this, uh, to deal with this interaction in specific. We do see the Moth Dust Changeling coming down. There's an island, which... Is probably good. Mm -hmm. in, e in the Sign of Draco, even has lifelink, so it's not like Murpho can even super realistically race it. Like, yes, you can island walk in for some damage, but the Sign's just going to gain it back and more. Yep. It has vigilance as well. Uh, a tough position to be in. And we know there's multiple removal spells too. I guess the spell pierces can help there depending on when BBD starts firing off the removal, they might be able to catch it with a spell pierce. Here's the attack. Gets in. Fur four. Gains back four life. What do you think of the Leyline Cyan interaction? Like, as far as its strength in modern, like, is it It's kind fine? of polarizing, to be honest. It is. Um, it really is. Some decks are just not well equipped to deal with it. Like creature decks have a really hard time dealing with it. But then other decks like Oreos, I, I mean blue white controls, so I don't really care about the combo. But it just creates very polarizing scenarios where against some decks, it kind of auto wins you the game. Against other decks, it's like kind of just down a card with the ley line. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really is funny how it's either so good or so uh so bad, depending on the matchup. And this seems to be one of the good matchups, uh, at oh, least yeah. at the moment. 
So it looks like Nikachu thinking about trying to do something with Flame of Anor. There is a Wizards on, uh, on the battlefield, so you do get two modes. Uh, if only the Scion didn't have Hexproof, it would be a very nice answer. But with the line out, what do you do? Draw two and... Well, I don't even know what you do with the second mode. Um, There is nothing you can do. Yeah. There. I I don't believe so. Draw two to find another Lord, so we can... Oh. Try to try to race, I guess. Just gonna wait till end of turn. Okay. Ooh. Wow, this is kind of a blowout. So I think you're gonna have to spell Pierce because, yeah, you gotta protect the Lord to protect the Moth Dust and not have it get eaten by the Cyan and gain a bunch more life. So there's a spell Pierce to stop the dismember. We'll see. Wow, there's some ley line. Okay, both of these spell Pierces are gonna pay off, which is. Kind of big. I don't know if it's big enough to shift this match, but both of those spell pierces did the job. Yeah, keep I think keep uh, the down. Definitely helps Nikachu more since he has the double card draw. And there's a wow, fire ice that can also kill the Lord. Boy, yeah, BBD is also. We talked about in game one the deck being a little removal light after sideboarding. Quite a few removal spells that uh, that you can draw out of this Rhino's deck because we've seen a lot of them this game. Yeah. Well, here's the life linking attack for four. It's ah, oh, it's such a such a tough position to be in when you see the sign of Draco and you know you can't deal with it. You feel like I can't win, but I'm like at twenty life, so I got to keep playing. But it's just such a <laughs> such a such a tough spot to be in. Here's the cycling of the Lord revealed. Getting a surveil land, gonna set up the top of the deck. And we saw those rhinos coming, what, next turn? They were suspended turn one, right? So we're, yeah. we're getting close to the rhinos coming down. And those yep. are all gonna benefit from that cyan, too. Yep, he's gonna have a whole army of life linking, vigilance creatures. Yeah, hexproof, the whole, the whole thing. Whole shebang. I think this is why you see pick your poison a lot. Is the only way to really deal with Scion is to make him sack it or sack yeah. the ley line and then play a removal spell on it. Yeah, pick your poison is very, a very nice answer that we see more and more in these decks. I guess if you're playing blue white control, you can there, you have so many answers. You probably really don't care about this at all if you're playing <laughs> blue white. Yeah, uh, blue white, yeah, blue white control. They have supreme verdicts and they have ley line bindings and stuff. They have a lot of ways, solitude. Well, Solitude so we can't see, deal with it, but it can race the Scion. Maybe. Yep. So we see the flame here, which I guess is is this upkeep flame to draw two? It's to see if he wants to uh, tick file up or not. Figure out, yeah, I guess that, that makes sense. So I'm going to draw, see if you hit a Lord or something and put into play, choose what you want to do with your Aether Vial. So we do see a Lord and another Aether Vial. So I guess you can uh, could Vile in the Lord and take it up or just leave it on two and put it into play later. Another Flame of Anor. Divination. I don't know if that's going to be enough to get out of this situation. We see a Lord of Atlantis going to come down. So now the Merfolk clock is increasing. The lifelink, though, is just rough. And we can see this fire here to snipe a Lord. And, ooh, tough spot for Merfolk. Yeah, I think BBD was trying to play around um potentially getting blown out by a vile response to the fire and ice so he just waited until he could just tapped out yeah waited with the vial on the stack get rid of the lord pretty safe there and yeah attack for two with the moth dust changeling and i believe we're about to see yep here comes the rhinos and gonna be up to 12 power on the battlefield here no answer in hand for the merfolk upkeep surveil as well yeah there's still all the i guess that's part of the power of the ley line right is you can leave these fatches uncracked and wait until you really need the surveil to take advantage of them mm -hmm. and gets extra land out of the way draws even more lands but uh... draw lands for the rest of the game and yeah probably and still win. yeah that, yeah that is probably true probably true at this point and I think that 
Nikachu could demonic tutor instead of draw every turn for the rest of the game <laughs> and probably still not. Yeah. Win. <laughs> also true. Well, the vials. What are we doing? We we staying on two. Are we gonna do upkeep flame of Anor again? I mean, at this point, it's just lethal on board, right? With the how things currently stand. Yeah. And all right, gonna let it go. Leaves the vial on two, draws an island. I guess you can flame of Anor and see what you hit, but I'm I'm not seeing a way out of this one. Yep, he needs that hibernation in your cyborg. Yeah. <laughs> the sneaky uh, hibernation. <laughs> I hope it happens because it would just be so funny to get someone with the ley line with it. Well, there's the flame. Gonna draw a couple cards, see what the deck has in store. And oh, it's got another moth dust. That ends got another moth. <laughs> got another moth dust. <laughs> uh, and there is the concession. And that was a pretty impressive win there, I would say, by uh, by the Rhino deck. Yeah. There's a fair bit of interaction back and forth.